Hi everyone, welcome to another video by me, the Techie Prepper. The world seems to have gone crazier and crazier uh, over the last year. Uh, there's so much stuff going on. Uh, you know, I know people are feeling the pinch uh, due to inflation. So I'm going to talk about something today, and, and that's freezers and the technology you use to protect them, uh, your investment in them. So um, the prepping community uh, has been using freezers for a long time, right? Just to have some food on hand. Uh, if an emergency comes, I happen to get into it because uh, hurricanes, right? I have hurricanes uh, where I live that happen uh, occasionally. So I want to have that food stored in case everybody makes a rush before a hurricane comes and cleans off the shelves. I'll have food, uh, hopefully to sustain me for a little while. Given today's economic environment, it, a lot of people have been investing in freezers and, and foodstuffs for them um, due to inflation makes perfect sense right you can save yourself some money you buy meat and other products when they're on sale and then you put them in the freezer and then you consume them later so you don't have to pay the price you actually mitigate the inflation issue if you do that right um, you can easily put uh, in a five cubic foot a small freezer uh, you can easily put 500 to a thousand dollars worth of meat and other you know foodstuffs in it so that's a lot of money so uh, what if I told you there was a way that you could actually protect your investment um, your worst nightmare as a freezer owner that's full of uh, food, uh, you got a lot of money invested in it, is uh, a freezer failure or a power outage when you're not home um, or that you're unaware of. Uh, you know, say it goes out uh, in the middle of the night on you know, a Friday night and you are busy all weekend long and it's gone two days and you don't even know because you haven't accessed that freezer that's been off for two days and the temperature rises and some of your food starts to thaw and that type of thing. So like I said, that's the freezer owner's worst nightmare is that something happens to your freezer or you have a power outage and you don't know about it and your food goes back. It's a lot of money down the drain. So I found a way to protect those investments. Um, I actually have three active freezers going and I have a lot of money invested in them. So I was looking for a solution that would allow me to monitor the freezers. And what I found is uh, Inkbird temperature and humidity monitors that go right inside the freezer and they communicate via Bluetooth um, and it goes to a phone uh, app right on your phone and it, it pushes uh, information to you uh, when there's a failure or a power outage. And you can set the parameters yourself as far as the high temp you know, the range of temperatures Say if you have it set at minus five degrees and you set the range for uh, a maximum of 10 degrees, once it hits 10 degrees, this reads 10 degrees, it's gonna push out an alert and it's gonna let you know that the temperature has gone up inside that freezer so you can actually investigate and find out what's going on with it. So uh, it also does humidity and if the power goes out, it'll push a notification to you that it can't communicate. Um, that, when you buy just the puck, it uh, works locally via Bluetooth, like I said. Um, a way to actually pump up the capability of that, which is what I do, is to use, because that only works in the range of Bluetooth, right? So that'll work around your house, limited range. Um, the freezers have to be very close to your phone, uh, you know, within 20 or 30 feet. So it's not always practical. So they also sell a, let's see if I have this right side up. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to show it to you anyways. So this is a Wi-Fi gateway. So how this works is this connects to the Wi-Fi in your house if you have it in your house. And what happens is the puck communicates via Bluetooth to the Wi-Fi gateway. The Wi-Fi gateway takes that signal and it communicates with your uh, Wi-Fi router in your house. And that sends a... Uh, uh, through the cellular service, a notification to your phone, to an app on your phone. It's a free app. So, um, like I said, this I have found invaluable. The cost that I, for me to install this at the time of this video was a little over $100. Now I have literally, um, you know, um, well over $1,000, probably closer to two in my freezers worth of, of meat and that type of thing. So. Um, $100 is a small price to pay, in my opinion, to uh, protect all of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run you through it um, 
piece by piece how I have it hooked up so you get a better idea of how it works. So let's get techie. Okay, so uh, I had my coffee this morning. You guys know I like to drink my coffee in the morning. Now I have a, a diet Mountain Dew. I like to keep the caffeine pumping. Um, so uh, I promised I'd show you my setup. So as you can see, I have one, two, three freezers. Um, each of them have their own puck and they communicate with the, they go via Bluetooth up to the Wi-Fi gateway. So the pucks communicate directly with this and then it transfers the signal it transforms the signal, excuse me, from Bluetooth uh, to Wi-Fi. And you can see it's got the Wi-Fi indication. That uh, Wi-Fi uh, is transmitted to the Wi-Fi router in my house. And then the information is pushed out from that via the cloud to my app on my phone. So as long as I have phone coverage, I can find out what is going on here. Um, you can see the, the indicators on the actual gateway that is the Wi-Fi indicator and that's actually lit. So that shows that there's a good connection with the Wi-Fi network in my house. And you can see the power. Uh, this actually plugs into the wall, doesn't use batteries. Um, and if this fails, if the power goes out of my house and this can't communicate, the app um, will pull this occasionally on my phone. And if it does not receive a response, it sends me a loss of communication. So I know that there's a power outage at my house. So that's just another level of uh, redundancy to uh, alert me to failures so when this is uh, I have like my batteries are all dead right now so that's what I'm doing I'm actually changing out the batteries um, and uh, once I put the new batteries in there you'll see these will all be flashing showing that they're um, actually communicating from the pucks to the Wi-Fi gateway so just in summary real quick I'll just show you an overview so you can get a, an eyeful here uh, like I said I have the three freezers the gateway and then the uh, Wi-Fi from here inside my house is about 30 to 40 feet away. I've had no issues with it whatsoever since it's been up. Knock on some wood somewhere. <laughs> and uh, you may see the, uh, this is a solar system I have. And this actually runs two of my freezers full time. Uh, actually right now I have it running one of my freezers and my dorm fridge. It runs them 24 seven and the panels are up on my roof. I do have a video on that if you'd like to check that out. Let's get right to it. I'll show you. This is the freezer that uh, my family uses mostly. Um, they put the pizza rolls and stuff in here. So everybody, and you can see, we got frozen treats and stuff. So I found, oh, dropped it. So what I found is there's a magnet on the back of this. And what I found the best way to mount it is towards the top of the freezer because it does use a radio signal, it's Bluetooth. And if you have it towards the bottom, it has to get through uh, there, it has to get through the, the casing of the freezer, and that can be uh, difficult at times. So you might get a lot of loss of communication. I found it's best to put it towards the top of the freezer. And like I said, my preferred method is I have a disc with a hole in it, tie wrapped to the top of the basket, and that way it's you know two, three inches down, and it seems to communicate more effectively that way. And this is the farthest freezer from the gateway. You can see it's about eight or nine feet away and I rarely have any problems with it. So let me crack this sucker open and put new batteries in it and then I'll show you guys um, how it works. Okay, so as you can see, I just replaced the batteries. I just wanted to give you a shot of the inside. Like I said, it takes a single AAA battery. I just use alkalines that I buy. The, um, the lifespan of them seems to be approximately two months to three months and you can set that uh, the interval that this communicates to the gateway um, and that has a lot of effect on the battery life I set mine for every I think it's set for 30 minutes um, I think I started out at 10 and now I set it to 30 and it seems to uh, let the battery last like I said about three months okay everyone hopefully you can see um, I had to switch cameras, but hopefully you can see this okay in the video. We'll find out when I edit it, I guess. Um, this is the main interface, you can see here. Uh, it has a Wi-Fi icon at the top, um, Bluetooth icon, and currently they're on Wi-Fi. Um, and this is the gateway right here. So what you do is you come in here and you bring up the gateway, and this tells you all the information that is reading live from the pucks inside the freezers. So as you can see, it allows you to name them. 
That's a seven cubic foot, that's five cubic foot one, five cubic foot two. It shows you the current temperature and the current humidity for all three. This gives you, this is a histogram, it shows you the battery percentage. I just changed the battery so they're all 100%. And like I said, you get about three months out of them that way. Um, this is a histogram, so this will pull up uh, since the battery was replaced. It shows you the time and it shows you the date and it shows you the temperature, which is kind of nice. You can actually export it as a CSV, which is kind of handy to have if you want to do stats or anything like that. Look at long term or, or save them. Um, so as you can see, the temperature is falling because I had to take it out to change the battery and it's pretty um, time sensitive. And what I mean by that is when you take it out, it'll start going up with humidity and temperature right away. So um, and then you go back and this is the settings so you can rename it. It tells you the version of the software. It tells you the interval. And as I mentioned before, I have it set to 10 minutes. You can set it to 30 minutes to save the battery. Probably get, you know, five, four to five months out of it if you change it to 30. But I like to know what's going on on a little more regular basis. I think I said earlier I had it set to 30, but I, I toggle back and forth depending on where I'm at. If I go away for a long time on vacation or something, I probably set it for 30 minutes, uh, you know, just so the batteries last. I want to make sure my batteries don't die when I'm not here. You can set that. You can set the lower limit and the upper limit for your temperatures. You can see I got it set at neg 20 and 5 degrees. So that means if the temperature falls below neg 20, it'll let me know. And um, if it, it raises above 5 degrees Fahrenheit, it'll actually push an alarm to me. So it's got that for all of the, uh, you can see the, the lower limit and the upper limit. That's the humidity. The first one was the temperature, that one's the humidity. So, uh, and you can restore the defaults if you want at the bottom. And then you just save at the top after you make your changes. I didn't make any changes, so I'm just gonna go back. So, as you can see, that's it. Once you get them set up, it's pretty easy. It's all automated. Um, once you get the pucks and you get the Wi-Fi gateway, you set it up in the app. Um, it goes right through the whole thing with you. Uh, the instructions are very clear. And basically, that's all there is to it. Um, let's see if we can get an alarm, and I'll show you what that looks like. I'm going to go take the puck out of the freezer and see. Now you can see this is actually the 5CU1. You can see the temperature is raising already. This is the puck right here. Sorry about the lighting. So you can see the temperature is going up, and boom, there's my alarm. Hopefully you can hear it. Like I said, I'm using a strange camera, but so that's it. It tells you it's gone above my max temperature. So now I clear it. And let's exit out of this. And uh, what happens is that would have actually pushed. It's going to take a minute now to do it again, but it will actually push. Um, that's when I'm in the app. You saw when I'm actually in the app. It will actually push an alarm up top. Okay, so I showed you the in-app notifications. So I have it out again. Mm, sorry, you can't see it. Let me turn the light on real quick. I'm not used to using two cameras. Well, anyways, I've got it out. I'm in another app. I'm actually in Google Maps. So we'll see. So there's our, there's our alarm. So we're good. So I'll show you. Um, it shows at the top. You can see it's just like any other indication. You go down and it shows humidity is too high, temperature is too high. So it pushes it right to you. This is, you can see it's not connected to anything. It's on the cellular network. No Wi-Fi, you can see. So um, that's basically how it works. It can be any, anywhere in the world as long as you have cell coverage and this will uh, alert you to problems. Very handy. Hopefully uh, you've gotten some good information out of this now that you've seen how my, my system is set up and how the hardware and the software interface to push alarms to me wherever I am in the world as long as I have cell coverage and allow me to monitor my freezers and let me know if there's a problem. Uh, if I'm away on vacation or something and I get one of these alerts, I can always have a trusted friend or neighbor uh, or family member stop by and uh, 
and see what's going on and investigate it further and let me know and maybe mitigate the problem, fix it themselves. Um, uh, or if I'm just at work for the day and gone an hour away or something and I get an alarm saying, you know, if something's out of whack, I can always come back and try to fix it myself and protect the investment that I have in my freezer and the food that I have in it. So anyways, hopefully you've got some uh, good information out of this and you can make your own decision, but uh, please like, subscribe, and most importantly, like I say, with all my videos, uh, share them with friends, family members who you think might benefit from the information that I provide. This is just a very cool tool that I found that works. So with that, um, I'll see you next time and hopefully I'll have something else cool to show you. Bye.